Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of The Real Grill. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, in this week's episode, we'll be discussing Top Gun Maverick, the uh, long, long-awaited sequel um, starring Tom Cruise as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, uh, along with Miles Teller, Jennifer Connelly, and uh, Val Kilmer back as Iceman, with a lot of great other actors and actresses in this one. Uh, we've got Joseph Kaczynski directing this one, a little reunion with Tom Cruise. And uh, yeah, we've got Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell back again, um, three decades after the first movie. Um, he's actually been called back into Top Gun. He's been called back into it as an instructor. So uh, he'll be instructing these uh, new up and coming, very talented pilots. Uh, he's actually training them for a very specific mission, a very dangerous and uh, very, very difficult mission. So uh, that is pretty much the gist of that movie. Um, but hey, it's mostly flying planes and just badass, badass shit. Uh, so yeah, um, if you haven't seen the uh, movie, probably best to watch that before watching this review. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, uh, enjoy. Um, so Cam, I, I want to get to the bottom of this. Like, what is with your your disdain for Tom Cruise? Like, what has he ever done to you? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, why do you oh, hate him so much? <laughs> <laughs> But he's the gun. Oh, man. Careful your words now. Choose wisely. Yeah, Cameron, why do you hate him? Yeah, well, yeah. Why do you hate him so? Actually, I want to know. I just think he's a bit overrated. Does this, does this film change your opinion, or do you still feel the same way? I feel the same way. It's not, it's not a bad film. I just still feel like it could have been anyone but Tom Cruise. So. How? He literally does everything. <laughs> he's not like the best proper, but he trains to do yeah. everything like. I don't think anybody can face him in any movies he's in. Yeah, <laughs> apparently the... This is going to turn into a Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, good or bad. This I'm is it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise debate. <laughs> Um, now, apparently, the, uh, the the movie, he, the movie, the plane he flies at the end is his actual plane. Like, he actually oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, fancy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, well, yeah, no, well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like, Static about seeing a Tom, that Tom Cruise movie in general. Um, but I will say the movies I have seen him cast in, um, I feel like he he specifically fits the role of yeah. those characters. He does do a fantastic portrayal of the characters he plays. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably more so that I'm I'm usually not a fan of his movies as opposed to I'm not a fan of him as an actor. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's kind of stopped trying to act. To, he's a great actor and stuff because his early movies he's been a great actor, but now. I think he just wants to have fun with everything. Now he wants to kind of do his stunts and outdo everything. That's why he only picks roles where he can kind of do that now. Yeah. In, my, in my opinion, yeah. through most of the career, he's only really played one role, and that is Tom Cruise. Well, yeah, I don't disagree, man. I don't disagree, man. Just, just a quick fanboy rant. Yeah, movies, man. Just yeah. a quick fanboy rant, yeah. So, <laughs> so like, yeah, no, because this is what, because because you just said, Cam, like, he's, he's, he doesn't even play characters anymore. Absolutely, because he doesn't need to, because... He is the brand, like his name yeah. sells movies. All you need to do is put oh, so him in the movie. He's basically like Apple, yeah? What's that? You're saying he's basically like Apple. Just stick yeah. a name on it and he'll sell. I mean, yeah, if you want to compare him to Apple, then fine. But yeah, that's that's exactly how it works. I mean, he, because the thing is, he has his own production company. So like Mission Impossible, uh, movies like this, they all are made under his own production company. And like- Mission Impossible is just another Fast and Furious for me, man. Is it? It's just, it's got um, too I would say it's. A, I would say it's a bit better than. That's a low blow, Cameron Brown. I would say it's a bit better than that, but um, no, I mean, because the thing with Tom Cruise is like he is a perfectionist. Like he demands the best, like from his co-stars, from his crew, his production team, and it shows. I feel like it shows because you know he's even willing to, you know, put himself in danger to entertain audiences. This is how crazy he is. I like. I love him for it because he's so bonkers. Obviously, we've all seen the clips from Oprah, Oprah Winfrey show where he goes bananas. He's like jumping on the on the sofa like a madman, and that basically yeah. translates to the screen because he's prepared to like. I think there's a story you told me, Subi, where he uh, he basically broke his ankle where you worked. Oh, on yeah. Oh, when he was doing that yeah. one jump across doing, the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact: he broke his uh, ankle on the building I work at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Right, so, should, right, so it's your fault, Subi. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Man. I just want to point out, John, about Pete, sorry. Everything you just said, you could say about Jackie Chan. About Jackie Chan? Yeah. But he's literally the Hollywood Jackie Chan. Yeah, well, yeah, there you go, exactly. Yeah. And the thing, but the thing is, with Jackie Chan, 
Jackie Chan doesn't really have the same uh, block blockbuster power as Tom Cruise. Not anymore, anyway. Um, yeah, no, uh, anymore. I feel like like Tom Cruise pretty much um, the whole pandemic. Like he's one of the driving forces to kind of draw crowds back into the theaters as well. But anyway, I digress. And, I'm, and, I'm, I'm and just to just 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 to add what you were saying about his brand, it's not even like he's like he's ex- he's he's like exploded like recently or over the past decade, like. His brand has been going on for a long time. A long like he's time. managed to stay consistent in keeping, um, obviously, his fan base and his movies, making them lovable yeah. and interesting. Um, so yeah, I have to say hats off to him for the consistency across yeah. his career with his acting. Because some some actors tend to kind of, you know, you get you might get bored of them. Um, like you know, they might end up doing like a Bruce Willis kind of thing where it's all about just paying the bills. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he he stayed consistent. Um, so and he hasn't he hasn't jeopardized um, the type of characters he plays. I know you did say that he's you feel like he's a one trick pony, Cameron. But even in that respect, he hasn't compromised the type of characters he plays, the type of roles mm. he takes. Um, so he's done like you said, uh, Peter. He's a perfectionist. He probably picks and chooses what he wants to do and sees the, um... the benefits of having a production company. Well, if you're if you're if you're if you're a good enough actor, arguably you can get your own production company. Like, <laughs> if it, there's one thing, yeah, actually, no, well, actually, I mean, I mean, acting ability Alexander. doesn't determine you getting your own production company. Yeah, yeah. And no, Alexander, you, you can really say he's company. amazing. Too. Pay, pay for one. He's still a great actor. Have you guys seen Magnolia? Just watch Magnolia. That's all I'm saying. But I if mean, I can quickly just mention one more thing um, about Cruz, like, because, uh, like I said, he's like the Hollywood Jackie Chan, but I think he's kind of past him in, in, in a certain sense because of the fact that he continually does new things. Like, he he, he learned how to do a helicopter in Last Mission Impossible. He did the first, world's first halo jump on, you know, real screen. A fucking halo jump. He's going to space in, like, two, two years or something. He's just constantly outdoing himself. He can hold his breath for like six minutes. Like he didn't need to do that, but he just did it just mm. for, just to entertain the audience. Cause he knows what he is. He's an entertainer. He wants to entertain his audience and he fucking knocks it out of the park every time. So yeah, I just gotta commend the guy. I just gotta commend yeah, the guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Should we, he... we make this a Tom Cruise review? And just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bro, that's it, man. That's it, for real. Uh, yeah, just, just one thing before we get into the story, into the movie. Um, yeah, no, I just want to say that I completely agree with you, uh, Subi. And like, even if you don't like him as an actor, maybe you feel like he, you know, he's overrated, but you can't, den- you can't deny that, you know, he deserves your respect because as I said, he's been, you know, bringing out all these movies without him, uh, Hollywood or, you know, the Mission Impossible movies wouldn't be half as good as they are. So that's all I'll say. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, I would hope that they wouldn't be half of the ones that came out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think we need eight of Mission Impossibles, but that's just me. <laughs> I, I personally feel, I personally feel that the Mission the Two mission we didn't need, but everything after was. Yeah, <laughs> I, I personally feel the Mission Impossible movies make the Bond movies look bad. That's yeah, just my opinion, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Wait, all right, Top Gun Two, guys. All right, Top right, Gun let's, Two. Let's, let's go. <laughs> um, so you see, Subi. Right, cool, cool, cool. Did everyone watch? The, can I defer? Did everyone manage to watch um, the first movie, Top Gun? Um, no. No. Okay, so I'm the only one who's. Have you seen it, Ruben? I I, I saw it. Yeah. Okay, so us two are the only two. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, to be right. fair, I mean, it's not essential. Like Peter said, because um, well, we were talking about it before, yeah, it's not yeah. essential to watch it. And obviously this movie kind of helps people understand because they've got all the flashbacks and stuff. So it, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't really take anything away from it. It just kind of... Yeah, yeah. you, you I, I think it was just good for little bits of context, yeah. um, especially when you're trying... For me anyway, I feel like there were little bits of context in some scenes which did help me derive more emotion from the scenes um maybe mm. someone who hadn't seen the, the prequel uh, may have not been able to feel the intensity of some of the scenes i would argue um but yeah in, term, in terms of the story it certainly doesn't detract from from the story too much um that you can't enjoy it yeah it's a very it's a very simple story it's very easy to follow um and it's formulaic to be honest um you know the whole kind of um cadets being trained by a, a mentor who you know they underestimate at first and then they realize obviously you know this guy is basically just kakashi uh, of the air force <laughs> one. Um, and you know um, the, the way the way obviously things unravel um they end up earning his re- oh, sorry he yeah they earn his respect yeah they, they end up earning his respect so 
Um, I felt it, you know, it was very emotional, pulled at the heartstrings and, you know, pretty much accomplished it, everything it, it set out to do in terms of, um, you know, sort of um, the, the, the stunts, the action sequences, the sunset pieces. You really uh, feel the adrenaline rushing, uh, you know, even if you saw it in 4DX or not, uh, well, I, I mean, I saw it in 4DX personally, which is obviously with the moving seats and the wind power and, you know, the, the extra sort of uh, elements to, to add to that um, that experience, that uh, cinematic experience. Yeah. But for, for you guys, I want to get your opinions of like how you felt about it from a sort of action movie standpoint. Did, did you find it as thrilling or do you just appreciate for the story? I thought it was... Uh, far more thrilling than I, I thought it would be. Um, I thought they done a good job of building the tension of um, of what they had to do. All of the, the the scenes with them flying the planes, doing their training drills, I were very good. I thought they they shot those extremely well. Um, the only criticism I'd really have is, and I understand why they did it, but at the end of the film, it didn't actually seem like this major, difficult, miraculous mission was actually that hard to do. I mean, because everything, because they needed four or five miracles in a row and they got all of them. Like, like it was, so it just made it seem a bit like, I thought, and if they would have been brave, well, but it might, it, they would have to change the ending if, because no one died in this mission and it was meant to be one of the hardest impossible missions ever like to pull it off is like literally you need all the best pilots and even then you need back-to-back -back miracles to pull it off and they mm. all came back <laughs> like it, it, so it kind of I, that. Um, <laughs> I mean like, to be fair it did go wrong and they were in the base yeah. of the enemy for a while and so. then they got another back-to-back -back miracle you know what although although i will agree with you um i actually because i i actually quite enjoyed the fact that it had a happy ending where no one died but i think for me which still makes it equally um a great movie even even besides the fact that there you know no one died i do feel like there were there were real stakes i did get the sense that at any point someone in this cast can get taken out yeah. um and i just I, I do need to compare it to the first movie because the first movie i think didn't do a good job at making you connect with the squad with the characters it kind of just felt like besides tom cruise's character um his friend goose and um i think the other guy um played by val, val kilmer you didn't really connect yes. with the squad but in this movie they really made an effort to make you feel something for each of the characters and i think after the scene where they're playing that um football game on the beach I literally felt like, man, if any one of these characters die, I can understand why the, the other characters will feel it and why I would feel it on, from watching it on screen as well. And up until the end of the film, I literally kept thinking, man, like someone could die in this scene. Um, so yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was, yeah, thrilling the whole way through. I actually, um, I actually didn't feel that at all, really. I actually predicted pretty much everything that happened in that vinyl scene before it was going to happen. I one? knew that, I knew that Maverick was going to, try to save Rooster. I knew he was going to get shot down. The way he's playing around, I knew he wasn't going to die. I then knew that mm. Rooster was going to save him and that they both end up. And then they were going to get a plane to fly. I mean, it, it was very formulaic and predictable, as Pete was saying, in that respect. And I also knew when they mm. were having that dog fight, when he ran out of ammo, I knew Hangman was going to fly and save him as well. Yeah. It, just, I was, it, it I was, was so formulaic. It was like, you know that's, what? Like, that's why the tension <laughs> for me was not there, because I was like, I knew <laughs> bit by bit exactly what was going to happen. The thing is, the, was, the I thing was is, saying it to Cameron just before it the, <laughs> the thing is, the thing is to, a point, to a point, it was predictable, because I was able, obviously, I was able to start as well. As you do, like, you call out, like, our. Uh, X will happen, Y will happen. But I think in terms of the story, um, they could have made different de different decisions at all of those points, which wouldn't have detracted from it be being a great film. I don't know if, 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 if you understand that, but they, they could have killed off Tom Cruise's character and it still would have made sense to the story. They could have killed off um, Goose's son and it still would have made sense to the story. They could have done a thing where um, Hangman um, didn't turn up there near the end and it, would have, it wouldn't have detracted too much from the film. And I think that's what done it for me it kind of had, had me on the edge of my seat thinking this is what i would like to happen but are they going to do it though like if you know are they going to do it and until it actually happened on screen i literally felt like they could have just done it either way and maybe introduced that kind of wow factor where they just show someone getting cropped off and it's just like geez like yeah, i wish well, i wish you know my I mean, well, I mean <laughs> and this is bringing up other tom cruise movies i uh, like 
I don't think Tom Cruise has ever died in any of his movies. I could be wrong. But I can't, <laughs> I've not seen all of his movies. But like the chance of him actually, because I would have been, I thought that would have been a far braver ending if they had actually like, he sacrificed himself for his team to, or something like that. That would, But I understand why they didn't do that because they wanted that scene where an owner ball, well, cheering and being happy that they've, they've done, yeah. pulled off the mission, which was a, quite a good scene. And if one any of one had died, that scene, because yes, 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 yes. you can't be yeah. sharing it. So I understood exactly why they did it, but yeah, it mm. just made it a, a, a kind of a, predict, a predictable Tom Cruise movie in that respect. Mm. I still yeah. liked it a lot. It still was good. I still were thrilling, but in terms mm. of like me feeling the stakes and like, actually feeling that, oh shit, shit's going to go wrong, I was like, well, it can't go wrong up until because they need the missiles to hit. So I know nothing's going to go wrong up to that point because the, mm. the mission's over if the missiles miss. So yeah, that's why yeah, he needed yeah. that fluky shot, even though he didn't have the laser point. Like, I knew that was going to happen. That so was a bit after. Of I have to say that <laughs> when, it, it is possible. when the, it happen, when the but... sensor, when the sensor malfunctioned and he had no aiming, I thought that was the one thing which was a bit like that was very lucky because that could have I mean, gone anywhere. Like it was, it was no scope in it. It could have gone anywhere. It was going to in regardless of what happened. Well, he's he could a, have done he's, this and it still would have him, bro. As I said, he's, he's Kakashi, so he can do anything. <laughs> nah, you know what? Um, I kind of agree with you, Law, and I disagree at the same time because obviously it's like predictable uh, cliche. So you can see where it's going. You know, you can see it, it plays it by the numbers. But um, I, I, I still felt there was a lot of tension, especially with the flying scenes. Um, you know, there's a bit with the drill where I can't remember the name of the character. It's like, um, I think he was he was the one pilot who just had like a regular name. Can't remember his name. Oh, Bob. Bob, yeah. Um, where he's he's basically um, he's he's doing the vertical climb and um, oh, that was Cougar. The black guy. No, that's, that's black oh, guy dude. too. Oh, that's oh, black guy too. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think black guy too. I don't remember what his name was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paycheck, I think. But yeah, I mean, there was oh, yeah. there was a point where payback, sorry. there was a point where no, obviously... payback was black guy one. Okay, so yeah. it was a cougar. It was again with a C. I All right. Remember. Okay, let's let's just say it was a black guy. But anyway, um, yeah. I'm not really attached to any of these yeah. characters, so, so I disagree with Ruben. Huh? Yeah. No, there were two black guys. <laughs> That's what I mean when you were saying that you were attached to this squad and all that. And I was like, there's there's two black. Guys. No, there was one black guy in the squad. No. No, nah, there was one. There was just no, one black guy. There was, oh, a, there, was okay. there was a token black yeah. guy. Anyway, so um, anyway, yeah. so yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's a bit where he basically goes unconscious because he can't take the pressure yeah. of the G force. And yeah. I don't know about you, but actually that felt very, that felt very, very yeah, suspenseful. That one, like, that there was, was actually like that. more, there was more tension in some of the training drills than yeah. at the actual, yeah. <laughs> the actual end mission, I thought. Yeah, because I thought, oh, is he actually gonna, yeah. are they actually gonna kill him off? Because he was just black guy number two, I thought they, well, they actually might have to kill him off. <laughs> <laughs> we all know his fate. <laughs> If, 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 I like if, how they explained because um, one thing that really helped us understand that moment was that I think Tom Cruise even explains like how it feels like it feels yeah. like you have two thousand pounds on you it feels like your skull is about to like get crushed yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was like you understand well, not understand but you can kind of guess what he was feeling so I made that yeah. scene why how it was yeah. and obviously it felt I don't I don't know if it's be for you because you were on obviously the the four DX experience I don't know if you kind of got that. Amplified, you know the whole G-force <laughs> effects. You could actually feel that. Were you passing out? Were you passing out? Did they cut the oxygen off in the room, like to make you start like? <laughs> yeah, man. If, they yeah. Did, if they could do that shit in the future somehow. Oh man, that'd be yeah, crazy. That'd be, that'd be crazy. Know, bro, but yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, oh, and man. you know, uh, um, you know, apart from the flat, the flying scenes, I think the flying scenes alone, you know, were fun. But as you, again, going back to what you were saying. If it was just that, then the film wouldn't be as memorable. Um, yeah. But the fact that it had like so much emotion, I was saying to Ruben, because me and Ruben had a chat about this film, we were saying like, you know, take away Tom Cruise, take away the whole Top Gun name, take away uh, the franchise. The, the core of this movie still, um, you know, still still makes you, it has like the poignant moments. Um, Powerful. Yeah, the, mm. the, the, the bit where, uh, what do you call it? He's um, Maverick is, he gets chucked out of the bar and he's looking back in he's through the window he sees goose's son playing the piano and that, that kind of takes him back to obviously the first movie um yeah you, you know as an audience member i really felt that i really felt that emotion and obviously you know i actually remember that scene and i feel like they waited a bit too long before they played the flashback because i sit there like i, I like some context please oh, and yeah. then they played the yeah 
but then they played the flashback because like that's a bit delayed. But yeah. well, I mean, you knew that you knew that Miles Teller was his son, right? So you could kind of yeah. see where what they were trying to what they were trying to um, you know. But this is why this is this is why I asked you when we spoke the other day. I asked you had you seen the first film? Yeah. Imme- immediately when I saw him playing the piano. But when I see more Kowitu, I was like, he's going to play the same song his dad played the first film. Yeah. Um, but obviously, if you haven't seen the first movie, perhaps until you see the flashback, you don't draw that line immediately, yeah. is what Cameron's saying. Um, so yeah, maybe, yeah, valid, valid yeah. point, Cam, I think. Um, I, guess, so, I guess so. Well, I, I understand the point of that scene. I feel like they delayed the play of the flashback just a bit too long. Mm. Got, for those who've got... If I was born in 2000 and I'd gone to this movie, and I, I would have been like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's the flashback. It was just they could have mm. saved context. a couple of seconds there. Yeah, mm. you can't, you can't, you can't draw immediate context. Um, you should have watched the first movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 like, that's yeah. the bottom line, man. You should have watched it. <laughs> <laughs> you got not to blame by yourself. Yeah. I think what done it for me is just that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you you brought up that scene, Peter. But I, I, I felt like there were a lot of um, key scenes, which really short scenes, which just pulled you back. Um, to the, emo- to the emotion from the first movie and built upon them. So yeah, there was that scene, all of the scenes where he keeps saying, talk to me, Goose. Every time he said that, I was just, I, I, I felt the emotion behind behind it when he said when he said that, because that was something they always used to say, like Gucci in, in the first movie, it was kind of their thing. Um, and yeah, like the scene where he's talking to um, that character, Penny, uh, I think her name's Penny, right? He's yeah, talking yeah. to her about, and he's, and you know, she's asking him, like, why did you pull, um, um, was it Rooster's, uh, like his application was filed, like so he didn't delay his uh, his uh, studies or whatever in, into the service, and he's like, oh, because his mum asked me to, and he says, I'm I'm not going to tell him. She said, oh, Are you going to tell him? And he's like, No, I'm not going to tell him because he hate he's going to hate me for it forever. He doesn't need to hate her as well. And I just thought that was mad sweet, man. Like I yeah. felt like you could you could really see the weight and the, feel the weight and the burden that this character Tom Cruise is playing is carrying throughout the film. He's carrying the death of his friend on the shoulder. And he's also carrying, obviously, the hatred of that friend's son, and he's yeah. bearing all that weight throughout the film. So yeah, I, I, that really that hit me hard. Like, yeah, I, that, I, that I was really resonate. well done. Yeah, I, I love that I conflict. That internal right. conflict was so good, man. So good. I really felt it. Um, my one, my one issue with the film was the fact, and I, I can see why they sort of made this decision, but with the enemy, the well, the uh, quote unquote antagonist antagonists of the movie were basically just like <laughs> faceless. Uh, you know, <laughs> enemies. I, I don't know. They're like video game enemies, I guess, who had no flag, no allegiance to any country, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. region. Let's I guess. We can we can all surmise. Yeah. <laughs> that you already belong to. <laughs> yeah. They they may as well have just been NPC. I think they were just NPCs. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, like, yeah. that's what they were. We want this movie to sell everywhere, so we're not going to say nothing. Like, we don't need to make this political at yeah. all. It would just be some countryless guys who just happen to have. Do you like think? That, do you think that? Do you think that detracted from the story or movie for you in any way? Um, it, made it, it, made, it made it a bit silly. It did. It yeah. made it silly. You made it silly that the Navy just like going off this. A random base. A random base. Yeah, it made it look like, yeah, it it look yeah. like some sort of uh, like mini me yeah. um, Austin Powers evil lair type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's, it made it a bit silly. I understand why they did it, but the fact that it's just because you, you can't just get uranium. Like it's not just something that you just <laughs> and all these the fighter jets and all these. Service to air missile, like obviously. I reckon if this movie come out a year ago, this movie come out a year ago, it'd have it'd have a name for that country. Yeah, Um, Yeah, I think we just live in a time, and I think I think I think the fact that I mean I mean I mean arguably I get what you're saying. They could have at least given revealed to you or given like some like nation name to the country. Not even like making giving it like an actual face for them, but just giving it a country or. Uh, a no, flag behind it, that, but no, but, that, that would have been problematic. No, 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 but, no but I mean, no, but I mean, I, I understand why, why, why you're saying it, it could have made, um, if we were in different times, it could have made a difference and had given some impact to the movie. Um, but I do think the fact that they kept it as, as Peter said, the faceless kind of villain, um, they kept the focus on the characters, they, they kept the focus on one side of the movie almost, just on the with the American actors, the characters, and the whole aspect of Tom Cruise training these young fighter pilots. In the end, it almost wasn't even about well, the yeah, mission it just itself. Was a it, was, 
Yeah, it was about, it was about point of view. Yeah, it was it was about the journey rather than the actual mission. Yeah. Yeah, from, from like yeah. doing the briefings, like they're obviously gonna say what country this is. Like it's it's just from a narrative point of view, it really yeah. it just, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. silly. That yeah, yeah. just seems silly. <laughs> In a way, well, progressive, it, it sort of feels like it's America. Yeah. It, it feels like America pretending that the rest of the world does, doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it was a big deal, but it just—it was just a bit. Yeah. It was just, I understand why they did it, but it just—it it kind of detracted, I thought, mm. a bit from the seriousness of some of the elements and the mission itself. But uh, it, it made them seem more like you know superheroes or super age secret agents or something more like a James Bond film rather than actual like. Serious. Yeah, yeah. This is the navy, like navies yeah, of other countries, not yeah. yeah. so rather than some evil super villain with a, a layer. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a Tom Cruise movie, so I, I, I can see why they <laughs> why they would do that. I was gonna ask, did you guys have any particular favorite performances from any like particular actors or and just like standout moments in general? Um, For me, it's just mostly um, Cruise and Miles Teller, um, yeah. just their relationship and and you know the. The, the the what's the word the resentment that he felt towards mm. him and kind of eventually going to respect him and learning why his dad respected him and all this kind of stuff and um the fact that he was like because remember when uh reuben you kept saying that when he says talk to me goose which was really sweet i i i really liked when uh, miles teller says talk to me dad that that really got me as well mm. uh, so it just just shows how much respect he has for his dad and how that kind of went to cruise and he started realizing um, you know why he's the best and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, those two were the standouts for me. Yeah, just to, um, just to, just 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 I'll be like this for five seconds. But just to add to that, I was gonna say Hang, Hangman as well. Um, although I don't, I don't think, I don't think he got enough. Um, like it didn't focus on him as much as obviously the original focused on Val like Kilmer as kind of like the rival character. Um, but I actually quite liked his character as well. He didn't really go on. The, you didn't get to see his journey, but he kind of does have that kind of mini redemption arc for himself at the end. Yeah. What I like about his character is that he's actually the Maverick. He he's the because because he did everything that Maverick did in the first movie. If you remember, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He abandoned his wingman. All that's gonna stuff exactly what Maverick did. And even Maverick says, "Oh, I haven't I haven't seen that in a while." <laughs> it was calling back to the first movie. So, really well done. So he was the Maverick of the film, and yeah. even Maverick introduced Maverick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's the point. Is that because if Maverick hadn't done the run in that time. Hangman would have been in Maverick's place. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, because yeah. you can't yeah. have two Mavericks on it, I think, was the reason why he couldn't choose. Yeah. But in terms of performance, I agree. I think um, Tom Cruise done a very good job um, in the leading role in a fort, Miles Teller. In terms of the rest of the cast, I feel like a lot of them weren't... There wasn't okay. a lot of depth to any of them, really. They were just they were really forgettable. points and NPC characters. You had the strong female pilot. You had the black mm. guy. You had the nerd guy. It's just, it, they're, didn't really know because they all knew each other anyway it seemed like we didn't learn much about their motivations what they wanted mm, you know? yeah. it was the focus was just around um rooster and obviously him losing his dad and being resentful it was tom cruise mm. even mm-hmm. Man, the generic rival guy was mm-hmm. like pokemon like he's gary or whatever <laughs> gary Hatchin, all that. He just, he just, um, <laughs> there was much definite he had a mini redemption ask because obviously he was basically he was the the best pilot there, obviously, but he was a prick. So yeah, uh, yeah. he actually saves him at the end, so he gets a mini redemption arc. But yeah, it was. I think it was very, very, very surface level. Even the love interest, I didn't really. I thought it was quite generic. Yeah, the love interest threw me. Yeah, I thought the love interest. There wasn't much to that either. Um, I thought it, the focus really was seemed to be, and I think maybe it's deliberate, is to focus on the relationship between Rooster mm-hmm. and um, Maverick. Yeah, I think it had to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, yeah, no, you're right, Law. I think with the, with this, obviously, they uh, sort of pigeonhole everybody into their archetype, their character archetypes, just to make. Because I think I think with that way, it makes the audience easier to grasp onto the kind of person they are without having to show this kind of story arc, this backstory for each and every character. So I, I, I get what where you come from. It is a little bit lazy, but it's effective for like okay. I get this is the who's this this is supposed to be like the the jock. This is supposed to be the token black guy. Yes. This is supposed to be the yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, you do get to feel their personalities in that scene where um Cruz is having a, you know, sim- simulation dog fight with everyone. So you kinda get to see their personalities a yeah. bit. Obviously it doesn't exp- it doesn't go in depth or anything, but mm-hmm. I think enough to kinda 
you know, get to know them a tiny bit. And like Ruben said, we're, it kind of made you care for them a bit more as well. Yeah. I, think, I think Pia made a very good comparison. It was like Kakashi and Team 7, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 just, just, just cutting them out and telling them exactly about himself. Each one. Why did you die? This is why you die. Why did you die? This is why you die. You're too fucking slow, bro. You're too... Oh, um, yeah. You're yeah. Just... Oh, man. Well, no, can I can I just ask like towards towards the end of the movie when he actually picks Rooster, do you guys think that was an emotional choice on his part, or do you think it was a it was. rational choice on his part? Because obviously the so, rational choice I think I thought, would have just been Hangman. I, as... I thought it was both. Yeah. I thought it, it was, was a gamble. I thought it, it was, was a gamble. gamble. It was a gamble. I think the gamble was the emotional side, but I mm. thought his thought process was. Hangman couldn't be trusted to look after his teammates. He would have been yeah. trusted to do the mission. I yeah. don't think he would have worried about him doing the mission, but he was worried about there's more likelihood of at least one of us or most a lot of us dying mm. because of how selfish he is. Whereas That's Rustar looked out for his teammates. But I think he would have had... I think if you were to ask him before he picked, who do you think is more likely to pull this mission off? He would have said Hangman. Hangman. But yeah. he said, who's more likely to get everyone back safely? He would have said Rooster. And that's, so actually, that's, why. that's actually very interesting. Just to echo what Subi said as well, the fact you were saying Hangman is the maverick of the team. So I guess what you said as well echoes, he saw himself in in Hangman. Exactly. Um, but you, but yeah. it, it kind of shows how his character, Tom Cruise's character, has developed from how he was at the start of the first movie. He's now become... More You'd of hope the so caring. Thirty years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's become kind of the caring character. Lesson with Drock. Um, he actually does care about the squad. Um, he's the Kakashi father figure almost of the group. Um, That's because he lost his wingman. Though. I think he learned that from yeah. losing, losing yeah. his wingman. And mm. I wanted to ask you, um, Subi and Ruben, as well. Obviously, comparing Maverick's flying skills from the first movie to this one, would you say he's vastly improved? Like he's a lot, a lot more. Uh, what do you call it? A lot more experienced in terms of like the way he flies, or is is he in the first movie? Is he meant to be like a prodigy, where he's basically just like an elite sort of fighter flyer, fi uh, jet fighter flyer pilot? Sorry, from okay. the get go, he's like a he's like a prodigy or like um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he was portrayed as a prodigy, wasn't he? He was like the right. best. Even even the um, the higher ups, they're like, oh, I don't like the way he treats his teammates, but I have to say he's the best freaking pilot I've ever oh, seen. Okay, that kind of stuff. So yeah. he was like yeah. prodigy from the start, really. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so he he, he kind of gave me the feel. He like the uh, like the Eddie Murphy from Independence Day. He is the guy. Um, what? Eddie Murphy, what? what? You, bro, what? I'm scratching Eddie my head Murphy. right now. Wolfsmith, 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 Wolfsmith. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I was talking about Batman number three. We're talking about Batman number one. Oh, yeah. Wait, are we? Are we? Are we still talking about? Are we still talking about everything everywhere all at once? Where Eddie Murphy's in the multiverse? Yeah, when, when, Eddie, <laughs> when Eddie Murphy did play the guy from Independence Day and the other yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he was. He's kind of like the Wolfsmith character, and that he is like, as we said, he's the guy. He's the. He's a great fighter pilot, um, but he's the one who do he takes risks. He's unpredictable, and as a result, um, he does end up having arguably some of the best flying skills out there. His unpredictability, um, and also I guess his arrogance as well, makes him makes him great. Um, but just to go for everyone, I think for me, what made this movie a lot better than the first as well is this movie does a much better job, probably based on the time it's been filmed in, but a much better job at actually showing the maneuvers on the planes than the first movie. From the first movie, all you really get to see is just them sitting in the cockpit and kind of shots of the planes flying through the air here and there. Yeah. And they couldn't obviously do a lot of the, show the maneuvers, show the landscapes um, on screen. Um, and that kind of detracts from the intensity of the first movie. But in this movie, really? in the sequel- based on, based on when the first movie was, uh, there's different technology really. That yeah, yeah, well, exactly, yeah. they exactly, they, they, they just couldn't do it. Um, but in this movie, the sequel, you can kind of, I think that visually they put across everything they want you to see on yeah, screen. Yeah. So now you can actually see what makes Maverick so amazing. Not just him sitting in a cockpit with kind of the, the flight stick doing this. You can actually see the maneuvers properly how they want you to see it. So, yeah. And I think to give the food for the first movie, because I've not watched it, but I would imagine just to give it um, a, a bit more of a, a defense is that because the technology wasn't there, that means the script and the acting has to be a lot better because a lot of films today 
they use the the technology as a crutch really and think just i can just show you shit, so i don't have to to convey as much in the scenes through acting or through the dialogue or through the script so um, i'm not sure if the script or the dialogue was better in the first one i've not seen it but i know a lot of movies nowadays because they got the technology now they think that they can substitute that for good writing and good um good uh, storytelling so I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Did you see that in the first movie? Was the story better yeah. in the first movie I'm than glad, in this one? I'm, I'm glad you said that because actually I was actually going to ask you. I was thinking about this after I saw both films, but yeah, certainly the first movie they definitely tried to focus less on the uh, the, the, fl- the flying the planes and stuff and the actual action in the sky, and more on kind of the the drama side of the characters. I thought like that was more of a focus in the first movie. Um, but yeah, just in, interesting you, you say that because I definitely do get the feeling that in, in these days they do use all the flashy stuff on screen as a crutch to the story. And back then they did have to focus specifically more on the story to be the selling point because back in those days, the technology to show what they wanted to show, it just wouldn't do the job, couldn't do the trick. Um, so yeah, would, would, would you say, just generally, would you say that apply, is that like a general rule you would apply to everything just in terms of... Yeah, definitely. Of, yeah, How generally, I think, I think yeah. movies nowadays, the ones that are the top tier, that can marry the two together, that has great storytelling with those effects. Um, a key example of of where this has really gone wrong is would be Star Wars. Everyone, I think, oh, yeah. universally agrees oh, that Star Wars prequels <laughs> are far better. And it's not because they look better, because they yeah. look terrible. Like, based on the technology they had, the Star, the Star, the lightsaber battles, the Starship, they, they, they by today's standard, they look ridiculous. But story, because of yeah. that, they had to, to, to flesh out the stories a lot more. Whereas now, in the Star Wars prequels, and obviously now the Force Awakens and all that, because they got all the flashy lightsaber fights and all of that, they think that they don't have to tell any compelling stories or have any compelling moments in them because they have all of the flashy technology to show all of the mm. space stuff. Which I love, by the way. I do love all the space mm. stuff. I love the flying stuff in Top Gun. But doesn't mean that you detract from telling a good story and i think a lot of movies too many movies it's a lot easier to just show flacky stuff rather than it's a lot harder to write meaningful dialogue and 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 have performed so i think yeah i think generally movies that's one of the the issue criticisms that i have in movies in general nowadays oh yeah Yeah, i mean i feel i feel like i I don't know if this is sort of new technology with the whole um, strapping a camera to the outside of the cockpit um i don't know if that's been done before but I feel like it, you know, really made a, a massive uh, impact to, you know, the experience of this movie in general and just how immersive it was. Like by the end of the movie, I felt like I was actually stepping out of the cockpit. Like, I, cause you know, <laughs> that whole suspense of disbelief um, is really, really, really strong with this movie because you, you kind of just get lost in the, in the moment. You get lost, you know, in the midst of the, 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 the sort of the flying and the, the action scenes. So I feel like, yeah, you're, you're right about um, a lot of movies do sort of rely more so on the technology and the special effects. But, you know, I, I think I feel at the same time, obviously the technology and the like the CGI, I, I couldn't even tell if there was any VFX used in this movie, uh, going back to Mission Impossible. There's hardly I mean, any, but it's mostly Top practical Gun. effects and real yeah. like. So I've heard, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I feel that's irreplaceable when it comes to, you know, the action set pieces. But um, yeah, I feel like the technology is so good uh, that uh, that sort of suspense of disbelief is a lot more credible with movies today. So you, it, it really puts you in in the movie. Um, and yeah, as well, obviously a story is one thing, but obviously the experience is another as well. Like, so you, you're not just coming in for one thing; you're coming in for both both of those things as well. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was really sort of backing up your point or kind of making a counter argument. But... Yeah, yeah, basically no, it was basically yeah, I I agree. I think having both is what the ideal is but it's very difficult yeah so uh a lot of movies tend not to do it but i actually think this movie done a pretty good job marrying the two i mean in emphasizing where it wanted to emphasize and also and the effects i thought were really good it kept me enthralled uh-huh. in, in this movie yeah. um I, I and i did think it would to be fair because i didn't see how flying planes for two hours was gonna exactly be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, was wrong, yeah. I was shocked but yeah but I, and I do regret not seeing this in 4DX now because um, I think that this probably above any other movie would be pretty 4DX specific. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell it was made for made for that experience. Okay, so anyone else got anything else to add or do we want to cut to the um, final just, thoughts? Just one thing to add really. Um, just a really small bit. Um, just, just on the music. Um, so I didn't really notice too much of the music 
throughout the movie. It kind of just kind of stayed in the background and helped um, emphasize the intense scenes. But I will say, towards the end of the movie, um, I think it was around the time, uh, so during the last kind of fight with um, Tom Cruise and Rooster in the plane and they're taking on yeah. that on a other air fighter who is from an unidentified uh, country yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah um yeah i thought the music really started to build from there like i really felt like the strings and the percussions building and building and building from that point all the way up to the end when they were back on the ship and i just thought yeah i think that was fully just like hands in we're just going crazy like like on, on, <laughs> on, on the music because everything just kind of felt like it was building until things were just ready to burst explode on screen um, so yeah, the music towards the end really hooked me and solidified me with the intensity of the scenes that were taking place. I thought it was amazing. Um, it's not, you don't really get, we, we talk about like music a lot in when we review movies and sometimes we do just get the sense that the music's just complimentary background, we don't care about it. Um, but specifically towards the end, the music really, I, I thought about it while I was it. Um, so yeah, I thought that was quite, quite amazing to help bring the emotion of the scene together. Yeah, and um, you can't you can't talk about mu- um, the music without bringing up you know, you know what I'm about to say, Suvi. Um, what's it? Highway to the is it Danger Zone? Oh, danger Zone. <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> dude. That like the, yeah. it's just so powerful. Like whenever that mu- that you hear that music, <laughs> it just takes you back. And I ain't even seen the original, but like I still got the feels, man. I still got the feels. Mm-hmm. So. It, it's literally like because that's how this, this Top Gun one started. So they literally did it like exactly the same way. So that's why it was really cool to see. <laughs> it was literally yeah. the same way the first movie started. And yeah, banging out that tune, man, beautiful. <laughs> Good call, man. Oh, brilliant. Well, I want to hear. I want to hear Cameron's final thoughts. So I think because <laughs> he's yeah. had so much to he say. Said anything in a while, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> It was an enjoyable movie. The action scenes were great. Um, as, as as we said before, um, the other characters aside from Tom Cruise and Miles Teller were just really forgettable. Uh, the scene with um, Val Kilmer was a bit touching, I must admit, because obviously yeah. he's suffering, he passed away, you can see the emotion there. Uh, one thing I'll say is there was a couple of times, I think it was like four times, where he's talking to a character and they'll say to him, don't look at me like that, and he'll say, this is just my face. and. I couldn't agree with him more because he's got that same face in every movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the, the range of emotion he shows in his face is happy and sad, and that is it. He's got two looks. Cameron and I have the full time shots, bro. The full time shots out here, bro. But yeah, so it was an enjoyable movie, I'd say. I, for a rating, I suppose I'd give it a, I'd give it a six. Because while I enjoyed it, it wasn't anything amazing. It was predictable. It's just a generic Tom Cruise movie. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's 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 see if we can get another up up upward trajectory. Um, can we have Lawrence go next? I'm just guessing <laughs> this is going to be the up, upward yeah, trajectory. So. I think you might be surprised. Um, oh, oh no! Oh no! No, no, no! I think I think wrong wrong pick. <laughs> no, well, I don't know because I don't know what you guys are going to bring it. Yeah. But overall, I I did I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a, um, a great action flick, um, and action flicks can be predictable and still enjoyable. Um, and I did enjoy this very much. I would watch it again if it came on uh, if it came on on Sky Movies or whatever or any other <laughs> broadcasting network or whatever. I would watch it if it was on. Um, it made me interested to see the first one as well. I'm not saying I'm going to, but it made me interested. Um, uh, Ruben's description of the first one <laughs> didn't help its cause, but um, yeah, yeah. but um, and I think Subs told me that this one's better than the first one, so that also didn't help its cause either. Um, but it's um, I thought I finally enjoyed the movie. It was predictable, I, um, but I thought the set pieces were great. I thought Tom Cruise's performance um, in certain scenes was really good as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I think overall I've got not much else to say. I think yeah, like all the other characters were forgettable, barring the two main ones they wanted the, the focus to be around and uh, Iceman as well and his touching moment. I would say I would give this. Uh, I'm teetering. I'll be generous because um, <laughs> of uh, Cam's disdain for Tom Cruise. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> balance the scales a bit. I will give this a uh, 7.5. Uh, 10, okay. I, I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, I was in between 7.5 and 8. I'll give okay. it 7.5. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, 
Oh. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna jump him. All right, you guys yeah, are saying you guys uh, are saying uh, anything? Uh, yeah. So um, I think it's pretty evident that like I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Um, I feel like it's a very wholesome, you know, type of po popcorn movie that you would you know you could enjoy with your family. Um, it's easy to follow, easy to get into. It's obviously cliche, but I think in a good way because it, it sort of try it follows a, you know tried and true sort of. Um, sort of mentor student uh, relationship format which kind of transcends uh, generations and friendships and you know has a lot of sort of angst and you know themes of far, like I, I guess sort of like fatherhood in a way um, but yeah I mean I, I think everything sort of comes together really well uh, in terms of like you know the action set pieces the music um, even the performances um, the obviously character characters aren't as what do you call it aren't as consistent in terms of their development but i didn't really mind that because i felt like the ones that they did focus on um, it was more sort of substance or uh quality over quantity i don't know if that that kind of comes across with what i'm trying to the point i'm trying to make but yeah overall really enjoyed the film i'll definitely watch it again i definitely recommend it to as many people as i can and i probably will be um even if they don't want to even if it's not their kind of movie, I still recommend it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, give this an em uh, emphatic nine out of ten, man. Nine out of ten. Ooh, nine out of ten. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Best movie uh, of the summer of the of the year so far for me, anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go next. I'm I'm trying to stick with the upward trajectory. Yeah, we'll we see. Don't, have, don't, don't feel well, obligated to well, just. Well, I was, just well, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's, it's what it is. I've kind of. You didn't think Pete was going to go high. I threw a spanner in it. He's like, yeah, I really love this movie. Six. <laughs> That's why I was staying silent when he was like, who's next? I was like, mm, let's, let's yeah. guide this to Peter. I didn't expect yeah. mine. Um, but yeah, uh, it's shocking. Um, I'll, I'll just go next real quick. Um, I thought the movie was amazing. Um, I am not one to usually watch like a movie about obviously like planes or the military, any that kind of stuff. I tend to stay clear of all those things. So um, I went in with, you know, better expectations than the first one, but still fairly low expectations because it's just not my cup of tea. Um, Law, I wouldn't, if you don't watch the first one, I don't blame you because the first one was such a chore to watch. I literally had to stop halfway through and then pick it up later in the same day. It was a chore to watch. Um, <laughs> but this, the sequel, I thought was just amazing, man. It blew me away. Um, I really liked um, how it showed um, the characters bonding throughout the film. I thought that was amazing, something that the first movie didn't do. Um, I love the fact um, how they went into Tom Cruise's relationship um, with, um, with Rooster, Goose's son. And throughout the whole film, they had that kind of tension between them. And obviously, you, you, you know why. Ooh, you kind of have an idea for why the tension is there, but actually, because I thought it was just over the death of his dad. But then obviously you find that it was because of what um, he'd done with Rooster's career, so you didn't even get the full picture at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really well done. It really made me connect with the characters. And even though I think, Peter, you said um, the supporting cast were just kind of NPCs, totally agree, they were kind of NPC background characters. But just to echo what Subi said, they did have bits of the film where you see their character and their personality shine through. So you still kind of connect with them on some level as well. And it really builds that, that kind of wholesome family unit um, image, which I think they wanted you to feel um, before the, the mission at the end. Um, so yeah, I thought it was fantastically done. The emotion was there for me the whole movie. I thought very touching, all those little scenes um, where he was talking about Goose, the scenes where he was talking about Rooster with Penny, really well done. Couldn't have found a better way to improve it, to be honest, I just, I loved it. Um, the only thing which threw me off, and I did mention this to you, Peter, I was spoke, um, it was Penny's character. So throughout the film, I kept thinking to myself, like, did I miss something in the first movie where this Penny chick came along and they had a fling or something? Because I do not know this character at all. And I kind of almost felt like the movie was trying to suggest that you should know certain aspects of their relationship. So like the bar scene when they were talking and he was like, oh, this is the way I look. Like, is that something he always said to her? Like in the first movie that I missed? And the scene where he's in her house and he has to escape through the window. And she's like, no, not that way. And, he, and he's like, I'll, you know, I'm just the last time I got your window. Am I supposed to recognize that window? Has he jumped out of the house before? I, mean, I, really... I have to say, it is kind of implied in the first movie that, because um, mm. her name is actually mentioned in the first movie. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may, I think I, cause I, I didn't realize until after I Googled it, like the yeah. name reference in the first movie. Yeah. But I kept thinking, like, am I supposed to really know? that like, her yeah. character was quite yeah. important and prominent in the sequel, almost yeah. to the point where it feels like she was equally as important in the first, but she wasn't. So that kind of threw me off. That's the only thing that threw me off. Um, but besides that, it was fantastic. I mentioned the music, that was great. And I'm glad of all the decisions they made with how the story progressed with a happy ending, not killing anyone else off besides Falkyoma. Um, so yeah, I thought, I, I thought it was I thought it was great. Um, I'm, I'm going to give it right up there with you, Peter, a 9 out of 10. Um, that's, that's what I was going for anyway. I haven't adjusted my score. Um, so we're still there. Um, it's just now on, now on Subi to see if it takes a dip or not. No pressure, Subi. No pressure, no pressure. No, I... Believe it or not, I, I, didn't, I went into this movie not really expecting too much. So, like, I mean, Peter even knows when we're trying to figure out what to watch it. And I was like, oh, do I really want to watch it in 4DX? Do I want to spend the extra money on this, all this kind of stuff? Because I knew it was going to be good with the practical effects of and Tom Cruise doing his own stunts. So I wanted to see that. But this movie had no right to be as fucking good as it was. Like, it knew <laughs> that first movie out of the world. Because the first movie was good. It was a nice 80s flick. But as you said, it can be a chore to get through and, like... So I just didn't expect it to be this good. So it was a huge freaking surprise to me that I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I I, I loved the characters. Absolutely. So I'm a guy who always loves when people do things for real, that kind of stuff. Um, I like CGI, but I've never been like a huge fan of it. So I always prefer practical effects and like, you know, real, real determination, real training towards what you want to do as an entertainer. And this movie, he, it, for me, it was exactly what it needed to be, which is literally just about flying and like doing crazy shit and 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 focus and the relationship between um goose's son and and tom cruise uh, maverick <sighs> yeah just everything just came together so well and it was, it was a beautiful homage to um the first movie which is what kind of i think this movie that kind of made tom cruise proper into the spotlight so you could show the love that he really put into this movie and like how much he cared for the characters the story and to kind of give that first movie kind of like a bit of a love letter really to make it a really really good sequel so again it just did not need to be as good as it was and and like um law said earlier that if with movies that if, um you know focus on like flashy flashy effect stuff it's usually they don't need to make the story as good but this story was exhilarating for me like like just the way that everything happened and stuff it wasn't a complex story by any means it just needed to be exactly what it was, which is about, you know, doing the mission and all the problems that could arise with it, the relationship with the characters, the the team, and um, even with like John Hamm's character, kind of, you know, disrespecting him all the time and everything with Iceman. It just, yeah, they, they, they really showed love and I really, really, really appreciate that. So I had a blast at this movie. 4DX really helped as well. So I'm really glad I did that. So, Everything together, I'm. This is the first movie that I've reviewed here that I'm going to give a full ten out of ten to. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So this is this is probably like the highest rate. You know, what, Susie, I've just got this really funny image here. You know, you were saying for the X in the cinema. Like, I just got this really funny image of like maybe like a sign outside saying, you know, oxygen will be cut off for scenes in this movie. So, <laughs> if, if you have any concerns, bring your own oxygen tank. Like, <laughs> you know? uh, like a question, a question for you guys. Um, <laughs> that went to, to see it in 4DX. Would that have affected your rating had you not seen it in 4DX? Um, it's hard to say, kind of really. Time. Actually, yeah. Subi, didn't you say you were going to see it in a regular, well, not as a regular screen, but super screen? I watched the super screen after, yeah. And um, yeah, it, well, it, I still love the movie. And yeah, I'm going to say 4D. So if I didn't watch it at 4DX, I probably would have given it a 9 out of 10. But the 4DX experience just pushed it so far yeah. above that to give it a full 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah. I think it just, it just makes it a lot more immersive because you can, yeah. cause, because of the, uh, the motion. Uh, I don't know. There's just there's a that connection is just stronger with with, with you and the and, and the characters and you know the stuff that's happening on screen. Okay, and our second question for Ruben and Subs, I think. Do you think you seeing the first movie affected your rating of this movie? No, not really. No, not for me. Uh, because because like I said, I didn't expect much from it. I I yeah. like. I didn't think it was like a amazing yeah. movie or anything. My question was more for well, that's the point really. And the question was more because based on what Ruben was saying mm. in yeah. terms of his problem I, in the first movie. I, I'm I did that, I, that did that. I think I think from seeing the first movie, 
that this may have I think that it did affect me a bit I think it probably pushed the score up for me by maybe a 0.5 um, and that's mainly just because obviously two, two things obviously one one with the effects because I just thought obviously if you're watching a movie about planes I want to see the planes do shit in the air and the first movie done that so I wouldn't say badly but again it was so limited an 80s movie yeah an exactly 80s yeah. Movie. yeah so seeing, <laughs> seeing seeing it in comparison on the screen now with all the stuff they could do and also with just sorry to touch on what you were saying Subi how they were actually explaining stuff as well the first movie didn't really explain anything about the mechanics of flying or anything about the rules but this movie went into a little, not deep but a little bit of depth about that side of it as well um, so yeah I think for me comparing it to the first movie has pushed the score up by 0.5 certainly as well with kind of the, the little bits of um, emotional context that you get from um, seeing Goose the interactions with Goose in the first movie a lot um, it helps your contextual understanding with why Tom Cruise is so beat up and why things are partially the way they are with um, Goose's son Rooster um, so yeah I, I definitely feel like it's not necessary to see the first movie to love and appreciate no. this film but it does give you a little bit of a edge just with little things because I, I didn't even pay attention to the first movie like 100% I cut, it was something I had on in the background so I could hear it and when things were happening on the screen I would look and watch um, so it's not even like I watched it like cinematically the whole thing um, but yeah it gave it a little bit of a push for me um, to give it that oh, extra okay. 0.5 Cool. Well, thank you right. for that. So that might have that might have affected my score as well had I'd watched it in 4DX or had I had watched yeah. the first one potentially mm-hmm. maybe. It's so not yeah, too, I might, have been, a, I might have been on a nine with you lot as well. Who knows? <laughs> it's, it's not too late. You still got time. You still got time. <laughs> And there we have it. That is the review. Hope you enjoyed the watch. Hope you enjoyed the actual discussion. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, sticking around to watch the whole thing. Really appreciate it. Um, as always, it'll be great if you uh, left a comment below just to voice your opinions on either the review itself or the movie itself. We we love all types of discussions and uh, conversations. So it would be great to hear what you guys think. And uh, leave a like if you want as well. That would be great. Always helps. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.